I'm ready to go though. Alright, Shalom. Shalom. Give all praises too. Yahweh, Hashem, Yahweh, Shai, Hashem, Rakhadash. Let's say double honors to our apostles and elders. Very great millstone, peace and blessings to the Lord's hopefully elect. Uh, so again, we are the Israelites according to the Bible. In the Bible, there's a uh, special people known as God's chosen people. Um, those those people today in the Bible are known as Israelites today. They're identified as so-called Negro. Latino and Native Americans of India. We are God's chosen people, right? And the scriptures give us our history as of everything that our Lord has done for us. And that's what we're going to read a little bit on it. We also want to talk a little bit of how when it comes to the, uh, the other nations, those who aren't Israelite, I believe it or not, they actually know who we are. A lot of them know who we are and have known who, they, who we are and have used certain tactics and uh, measures and pass certain laws to ensure that we don't come back into this knowledge of who we are, right? To me, it's very revealing when I came to the truth to find out that the other nations knew who we were and they worked behind the scenes effortlessly, uh, shall I say, around the clock to prevent this from getting in our hands, all right? And that's what you people got to realize is the end of life when we say wake up, not only do you wake up to know who you are, but also wake up to knowing who your enemy is. Bottom line is, if, if they're not an Israelite, they're considered your enemy. And, and uh, the one who takes the number one spot, though, will be an Esau Edom, which today is the so-called white man, as well as the 1948. They like to separate themselves. They're the same. This is our book of Second Hedra, chapter two, verse one. It reads: "Thus said the Lord, I have brought this people out of bondage, and I gave them my commandments." by men service the prophets, whom they would not hear but despise my counsel. The mother that bare them said unto them, Go your way, ye children, for I am a widow and forsaken. I brought you up with gladness, but with sorrow and heaviness have I lost you. Right. Uh, that could be one of the Right. So, where is that at? I know it. I think it's Jeremiah three. I believe it's Jeremiah three and twelve. So the Israelites with the Most High is a marriage. The Israelites, Israel was a mother. Our mother, you could say, she's the Most High's wife. He took his wife to do with his. Right? Now we're talking spiritually. Right? And this is how you understand really what fornication is. Okay, fornication first is spiritual idolatry. Worshiping other guys, which in the eyes of the most high is adultery, right? And then you have the physical act, which is sleeping with another man's wife or a married woman sleeping with another man who's not her husband. That's the physical act of adultery or fornication. Uh, but the first uh, recorded time really is uh, spiritual. You read like the book of uh, Numbers. So the Lord said that our mother, which our mother is Israel, right? Especially at our peak. When we were at our peak, Right, and we were righteous. She, uh, we was one with the Heavenly Father. We had a, a real good marriage, but according to the scriptures, we played the whore by first and foremost worshiping the other guys and following that of the other nations, which the Most High had really does not does not like that. That's that's why it's a part of uh, one of the first commandments out of the Ten Commandments: You shall have no other gods before my face. He does not like that. Okay, the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Shem Yahweh wants the credit that they're due, just like in this life. You will want the credit that, that you're due. You came up with an invention and it's very beneficial to people, but then I string along and I claim that for myself and I get rich off that, right? But better yet, if I claim it, like people think my name is attached to it, even though you collect all the money for it, you're gonna get pissed off because it was your work that you wanted to be uh, recognized as. So when we worship the other gods, that's exactly what we did. We would, the Lord would bless us for a very fruitful year, and then we would give thanks to another guy for that, that'd piss him off. Like, what the hell is that? Yeah, uh, like the laws. You know, that, like in the book of Jeremiah, I think it's chapter 44, he said, oh, uh, no matter if it was the queen of heaven. Uh, but since we left off our peace offerings to 
Worship the Queen of Heaven, we had one of all things. What the hell are you talking about, man? Like, those guys don't even exist. The only guy that exists is your house. Right. Our people are, delu are delusional, man. Like, they don't want to give reverence to the Heavenly Father. Right? Was that it? I tied us along with I got it. So, yeah. Reset. This is, uh, I started verse 11. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 3, and verse 11, and it reads, And the Lord said unto me, The, back, the backsliding Israel had justified herself more than treacherous Judah. Go and proclaim these words towards the north, and say, Return thou backsliding Israel, saith the Lord, and I will not cause my anger to fall upon you. For I am merciful, saith the Lord, and I will not keep anger forever. Only acknowledge thine iniquity, that thou hast transgressed against the Lord thy power, and hast scattered thy ways to the strangers under every green tree, and ye have not obeyed my voice, saith the Lord. See, that's the order. It said what? Under every green tree? What does that say? Right. Uh, it goes back and says in verse 13, and has scattered thy ways to the strangers under every green tree. Right, that's mortal. That's the same way you're saying a woman running off with multiple dudes, right? Your husband uh, blesses you with, you know, pearls, and gifts, and whatnot, and behind him, when, when it's back is turned, you're going to lay in the bed with the other nations and giving them their gifts, right, so that, so that you can lay with them. So it's essentially taking the blessing that the man has given you going to give it to heathen under every green tree, you know? Meaning you playing the whore spiritually. And ye have not obeyed my voice, saith the Lord. Verse 14, turn, O backsliding children, saith the Lord, for I am married unto you, and I will take you one of a city and two of a family, and I will bring you to Zion. Right, so the Most High is married unto the Israelites. So again, these other nations now that, now that they see that we're, we're at the end, and now that they see that we're about to inherit our blessings, now they want to try to get in on this. And simultaneously, you have people that's coming to try to debunk this and overthrow this. Just like when you read the scriptures, okay? Whenever we were going back to rebuild our temple, the heathen nations tried to handle it, hinder us. Because if it's one thing people got to realize, our people, is us at our peak state vexes the other nations. They're only happy when we're on the low and the bottom, right? When we were in Egypt for over 400 years, the nations were happy. Once they started, we were free, now all of a sudden they're pissed off. I don't know about you, but that would piss me off to know that the, the, basically the whole world is only happy if, if we're in the lowest state. But if we're exalted and we got our own land, doing our own thing, now all of a sudden the other nations are vexed and pissed off, that's gonna piss me off, right? So that's why Amalek came up to fight against us. That's why Esau Edom didn't uh, let us pass through. That's why, uh, what was that? The Canaanites um, with the Rahab, right? That's why they were so pissed off with us because they heard that we were free. And now they're like, oh man, now we gotta go to war. Okay, so now you gotta go to war because we're free. You do realize each one of you that try to come up against us is recorded in the scriptures and you gotta pay for that, man. That, that should tell you something. They hate the idea of you being free. That's right. Hey, even uh, when we was coming out of Egypt, like the brother was saying, uh, we wanted to go through uh, the land of Edom. They like, shit, if you come to my land, we're going to meet y'all niggas with the sword. You know? So for white man, he still got that same attitude to the day. Isaiah 50 and verse 1. Thus saith Yahweh, where is the bill of your mother's divorce, whom I have put away? Or which of my creditors is it to whom I have sold you? Behold, for your iniquity, iniquities have you sold yourselves, and for your transgressions is your mother put away. Right, so we sold ourselves basically on the sale. We sold ourselves because we knew what was right and what was wrong. And we decided to do that what was wrong. First things first, worshiping other gods, other deities. Right? Uh, you got a lot of Israelites in Islam. 
right? And guess what? That's not the right way. Now they'll say, well, we worship Allah, and they just call him Allah. Well, Allah in the Hebrew just means power. He has a name. Second of all, that, that nation of Islam isn't, according to the scripture, there's no nation of Islam in the scripture. You have nations of people, you have the nation of Israel, there is no nation of Islam. And when you go to the history of all that, which we've done several times, right, it's all made up. Which makes sense Can you go to uh, Psalms 92, verse 6. Because we got different, every nation got a different guy. Go to uh, Deuteronomy 32 and 8. Got that song? Huh. I believe that's it. 92 and verse 6, right? Uh, I believe that's it. It's, got uh, it. it's 96 and 4. The guys in nation are right on Now, let's go to Psalm chapter 96, starting at verse 4. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Right. So the gods of the other nations are idols. That's why they walk around there with power stones. Now, Ishmael do whatever the hell they want. We don't care. I don't care what Japanese do. They don't believe in them. They, Moab don't believe in them. Okay. We don't care what, uh, we shouldn't even really care what the Edomites do with their uh, so-called white messiah, right? This devil here. They can have their gods and worship who they want. We are supposed to worship the most high. The problem is, is when our people go and dally with those uh, religions, and a lot of you are just doing it for financial gain. You become a mason for financial gain, and you become an Islam for financial gain. A lot of you guys in Islam, you ain't no real Islam, okay? can't quote anything from the book you read, you don't know nothing, you're just in it for, I would say, financial gain, status, because they're well-organized people. That's it, right? But what you're involved in is, is contrary to what the heritage the Lord gave us, so you're committing fornication spiritually. Shit, you deep. Yeah, I'm a boost. Boost. I don't know, man. You're just a nigga who's lost. Who's lost. Thinking deep. Different. No, it's, it's uh, somebody on the comments named Christian James. So he's Christian talking about how we we're looking at the outward appearance of everything like that. When honestly, again, you probably never heard us speak, but we never say it's about the outward appearance, right? It's uh, uh, it's about the spirit. Now you do have to be an Israelite, but the Israelite can come in different colors. The Israelite can look at the different nations, look like the different nations. You know what I'm saying? It's all about the spirit. So, you know, Christian James, your point is not valid over here. So, you know what I'm saying? You can cut that out. That's right. See, I ain't said, we ain't say nothing about skin color at all. We talking about nations. That's right. And the point that we have to make with you Christians is everybody wants to try to jump in this, right? Just like the Edomite last week. Don't make it about skin color. Well, who made it about skin color? We just saying that according to the Bible, this is, this is not biblically accurate. This is a lie. Right. And the true the true image with that he would look like a so-called Negro, a so-called black man. Right? right? Now you can't say it don't matter because I've told you a, a picture speaks a thousand words. It would make sense because one, it tells you he's from the tribe of Judah. That means his mother, his, his father, his brethren all look like him. He fled into Egypt to hell uh, to hide. We all, he saw the tree that the Egyptians, or the so-called African people, aka so-called dark-skinned people, hiding in the Egyptians to hide makes sense because they look like each other. Next thing you know, you gotta ask, well, who were the real Jews? The real Jews, what you call so-called black people. That all makes sense. Then you say, okay, well then, who were the Romans? The Romans were the so-called white people. So we're talking true, so just off that alone, you know now that the true Jews are so-called black. That's huge. That means we're not black. You know, we have nationalities. We actually have a heritage. Whereas in this society, we were actually hurt and condemned based off of this. But we know why. We know why. We broke the commandments of our Lord, so he gave us the hand of the other nations. For an appointed time, and he brought the spirit back into us, and now we're alive again. Get the drum, please. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32 and verse 8. 
and it says, when the Most High divided the nations, their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. So the Most High separated the nations. This is what he did. You had the nation of Esau, you had the nation of Israel, you had the nation of Ammon, you also had the Canaanites, the Hamites. When he divided them up, right, Israel got the best portion, the other nations got the crumbs. Verse 9, and it says, For Yahweh's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. Right. Can you give me Sirach 17 and 17? So Jacob got the, Israel got the most high. That was our portion. See, that's our marriage. That was him taking us as his wife. Okay? And we're the offspring. So that means Israel at his peak is our mother. That's what the scripture is talking about. The bill of your mother's divorce. Right? talking about us, our people, you and all, because he's talking, you know, spiritually, you know, and you got to show me when on the planet has most High ever took another nation and married himself into it, it never happened, only with the Israelites, that's what this is all about, uh, Isaiah, 40, Psalms 47, 147, and verse 19, and it says, he showed his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgment unto Israel, he have not dealt so with any nation as for his judgments. They have not known the praise of the hope. So they don't know the other nation. That's why I said they can do whatever the hell they want. The issue, what the Lord ended up having us do, uh, I, I tied one with the shoes, hope so. I was. Okay. Whatever. Uh, Jeremiah 51 and 20. See, that's the battle so what happened is the other nations, when they wickedness reached a certain height, the Lord has sent us in there to bring judgment. That was that simple. Because he got tired of seeing the filthiness. That's why when he gave us the law, how was that evil? Leviticus 18, 20, 22. This is Numbers 20. 14. It's just this uh, landmark of what I said earlier. And it reads, And Moses sent messengers from Kadesh to the king of Edom, thus said thy brother Israel, Thou knowest all the travail that have befallen us. And our fathers went down into Egypt, and we have dwelt in Egypt a long time. And the Egyptians vexed us and our fathers. When we cried unto the Lord, he heard our voice and sent an angel, and that brought us forth out of Egypt. And behold, we are in Kadesh, the city in the uttermost of thy border. Let us pass, I pray thee, through thy country. We will not pass through the fields, nor through the vineyards. Neither will we drink of the water of the wells. We will go by the king's highway. We will not turn to the right nor to the left until we have passed thy borders. And Edom said unto him, Thou shalt not pass by me, lest shall come out against thee with the sword. And the children of Israel said unto him, we will go by the highway, and if my cattle drink of that water, then I then I will pay for it. I will only without doing anything else go through my feet. And he said, Thou shalt not go through. And Edom came out against him with much people with a strong hand. Thus Edom refused to give Israel passage through his border. Therefore Israel turned away from him. So you see, that's our record. Everything you nations did to us when we were at our, you could say, lowest estate, weakest estate, is recorded. So don't don't try to come up here now and be like, oh, well, we always helped you. No, y'all didn't. Because if you did, Amalek wouldn't have came against us, the first nation to come against us. And the scripture says he's the feeble amongst us. That's why that's written, right? So the Lord got beef with you, Amalekites. And then you Edomites, because you always got an Edomite that wants to walk up even go okay. Jacob said he loved Esau. Yeah, he did. Because it was all love right then and there. You know? But, first of all, Jacob was being wise. But what happened after that? Esau still harbored that hatred. So, that brotherly love was gone. The brotherly covenant was broken when he put us in slavery. And what Jacob was doing in that moment of instance, you know, as Nathan Havashai said, you know, even by adversary, man. Yeah? You know, being wise, man. Yeah? Because you got a cop that pulled you over and you already see and they being belligerent. Hey, just you take the wise route, you know? And that's what exactly what Jacob did. Because if he was to say anything or antagonize Esau, what you think would what you think Esau would have done? He would have killed Jacob, man. Yeah? 
So what Jacob done, he was, he was rightfully being wise, man. Yeah, because both, what Jacob said, he, he seemed like he seen the face of God. That means he loved. First of all, he was being, like brother said, wise. He was trying to make sure Esau, Edom's anger was pacified because of what happened when they last left. Then on top of it, he coming out with a great big army and all Jacob got is his family and his cattle and his servants. So he prayed to the Lord and then it was all love. Like, look, here go my kids. It's okay, okay, by the way, that boom. Still went they separate ways. So they want to use that to say, see, Esau got a chance. No, because you saw what happened, right? He reached out, Moses reached out. You know, he was in Egypt all this time. We made, you know, brother. The devil said no. Man, the Lord recorded all that, man. That's why it's recorded. And then you had Ammon, just like you had Moab. Uh, Curse these people. You see, this is what the nations did when they saw that we would come out of our captivity. That's recorded in the scripture, man. They all, they all knew who they were. They don't like it. The fact that we're free. You want to know why? Because, because they're Jeremiah. Yeah, is that, is that it? Uh, yeah, we, we married yeah. to the about race okay. and who was the main person who uh the, the physical person who made it about race the so-called white man because he the one that put up those images of uh white jesus and naked white babies naked white angel babies okay and that's even scripture itself you see that they, they painted the likeness of the images okay and what second thessalonians uh the second chapter you know, he's showing himself that he is god now what was Lord, like you said, the Lord has always been about race. So-called white man made it about a particular skin color. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Because again, y'all always say, as this dude said in the comment board, it don't matter what Yahweh Shah looks like. Well, why is this image pushed all over the world if it doesn't matter what he looks like? Apparently it does matter what he looks like because you wouldn't pay the uh, who you all call Jesus, which his real name is Yahweh Shah, you wouldn't paint him as a so-called white man. You were painting him as a description that is uh, listed in the scriptures. Uh, yeah, you know? they, they don't want, they don't want Yahweh Shah to be black. They just, they don't want the Most High, the angels, and his only begotten son to be a uh, so-called black man. And to add to that, you know, like the brother was saying, you know, that was made as about skin color. We were going all the way back to the civil rights movement, you know, in that era, you had the bathrooms. Only white soon. Thought uh, water fountain. found white soon. Black streets from here. You made it about skin color, man. Right. Yeah, you know? no, yeah, no colored people, no Mexicans, shit like that, man. Yeah, and yeah. word race goes back to the word Raza in the Hebrew, which means gene. So it's all about genealogy. Okay, genealogy, generations, Israelites. What it's all about the whole book is about the well being of the nation of Israel. Just to go back to what you were talking about first, I think you read this in scripture. The book of Acts, chapter 21, and verse 37, and it reads, And as Paul was to be led into the castle, he said unto the chief captain, May I speak unto thee, who said, Canst thou speak Greek? Art not thou that Egyptian, which before these days uh, made us an uproar and leadeth out into the wilderness for 4,000 men that were murderers? For Paul said, I am a man which am a Jew of, Tar of Taurus, a city in uh, Cil Cilicia, a citizen of no mean city, and I beseech thee, suffer me to speak unto the people. So, there's always a difference between even though we may look like a certain group, that's not who we are. So this thing has always been about the nation, okay? Uh, yeah, he was mistook as an Egyptian. That's right. I would, I would say that because we look the same. This is uh, Jeremiah 51 and 19, it reads, 
The portion of Jacob is not like him, for he is the former of all things, and Israel is the rod of his inheritance. The Lord of hosts is his name. Thou art my battle axe and weapon of war, for with thee will I break in pieces the nations, and with thee will I destroy kingdoms. See, so the Lord said, with thee, I'm going to exact my vengeance. Okay, I'm going to use you to bring judgment. When the nations are doing too much filthiness, that's when the Lord will bring us down there and chop them down, okay? And then he'll give us some uh, things, like stipulation of this word right here. Okay? You have, um, like because I did a video, what was that? That was IUIC, of course. They were trying to use Deuteronomy 7 to say you can't marry uh, another nation or whatever case it was. <laughs> but when you read the scripture, okay, it's clearly telling you of those nations. Right. Certain nations, you know, mingle with, destroy it, don't save them. There is a council where you could save, right? Sheep, cattle, take the women. And there is a council where the Lord said, no, I want it all destroyed. It said like in uh, uh, Saul's case, right? it said with Amalek, right. the Lord said, everything got to go. Save right. nothing. Animals. That's right. What did he do? He saved the king, king. Yep. and he saved the animals using the sacrifice. It's the Lord all, right? Then there's times where we would take and the Lord said, you can keep the sheep and the cattle and all that. And you can keep the women. And then there's an account with the Midianites, where Moses said, any woman that ain't a virgin, get rid of her. But you can keep the one that's a virgin. So that's proof that women can be spoiled of war. It was in certain situations, depending on the level of their filthiness, right? The Lord didn't want you to say what you did because we got the law in the country by right there. It's in the scripture. So that's what we did. The Lord used us to say, Tied them down, Philistines, and all this filthiness going on. Israel going over there, and you know what you're going to do? You get portion of that land, destroy them. Don't save a damn thing, destroy the idol, bang. And that's what we were supposed to do, and we got blessed. That's all we had to do. But as the scriptures tell you, how did we eventually get divorced? Because we, we mingled ourselves among them. It says Psalm 106. Six and verse thirty-four, and it says, and it says, uh, they did not destroy the nations concerning whom Yahweh commanded them, but were mingled among the heathen and learned their works. That's it. That's how we went off. That's how we went off. Right. So, guess what? According to the scriptures, there's nothing wrong with wanting to be separate from the other nations. We're holy being separate. I didn't have a problem with saying, oh shit, white man ain't. You know, you tell me something about the Israelites. Whereas you have some, like I said, if a Jake come up against us, we already know what he's looking. He's looking to fight to get who in the kingdom? Esau. You ain't worried about no other nation getting in the kingdom. Okay? Only trying to save Esau Edom, and we know why, because of years of oppression. Right? But Esau Edom can't get a part of this. They're not in this. Oh, but they're a brother. They broke the brotherly covenant. More important, the Most High has vengeance for them. Everything they did is recorded in the scripture. All right. Oh. This is uh, the book of Leviticus 18. You said it started at the 21st, right? You think so? Because it all kind of ties together. Okay? Leviticus 18 started at the 21st verse, and it says, And thou shalt not let any of thy seed pass through the fire to Molech, neither shalt thou profane the name of thy God power. I am the Lord, Yahweh. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is abomination. Neither shalt thou lie with any beast to defile thyself therewith. Neither shall any woman stand before a beast to lie down thereto. It is confusion. Defile not yourselves in any of these things. For in all these the nations are defiled which I cast out before you. And the land is defiled. Therefore I do visit 
the iniquity thereof upon it, and the land itself vomiteth out her inhabitants. Ye shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments, and shall not commit any of these abominations, neither any of your own nation, nor any stranger that sojourneth among you. For all these abominations have the men of the land done, which were before you, and the land is defiled. The land spew not you out also when ye defile it, as it spewed out the nations that were before you. For whosoever shall commit any of these abominations, even the souls that commit them shall be cut off from among their people. Therefore shall ye keep my ordinance, ye shall not commit not any one of these abominable customs which were committed before you, and that ye defile not yourselves therein. I am the Lord Yahweh, your God, power. See, those are all the things that the heathen nations did naturally. And when the Lord got tired of seeing it, he spewed them out. He used us to go in there, and in the case of the land of Canaan, which is already promised to us, right, via Abraham, and as well as cursing Noah to Canaan, that land was going to be ours. We took that to be our possession, right? And uh, those are the things that they were doing. They were balding their heads, shaving their heads. They were committing homosexuality. Child and sacrifices. Child sacrifices and bestiality. All the things we were told not to do, the Lord said these other nations do it. And Cannib if you do it, uh, cannibalism. Yeah, cannibalism, yeah. eating blood. Um, these are the things that they were doing. And this is why they got pushed out. This is why they got cast out, you see? So that right there is separation. Hey, even even the uh, the, the Sabbath, uh, I believe it's Exodus 30, 13, I believe. You got these people talking about the Sabbath. Because look, the Bible is a popular book. It is, right? Because it's the word of the most high. But these other nations take offense of this. So you telling me that this book is only for a certain people? The answer is yes. Right. Now you can learn from it because it's words of wisdom. Right? And when you read the scriptures, uh, the wisdom was really for all, you could say. But it was really for the Israelites. Even wisdom itself, okay, got a commandment. That's in uh, Sarah. Oh, uh, shoot. Bible 
even when you go to the law, only give it to the Israelites. Huh? So you call yourselves keeping the Shabbat, Amalek. One, you're keeping it wrong, okay? Two, you, it don't mean nothing because you aren't an Israelite. And the, and the reason why we get on America for it is because America, out of her own mouth, uh, said that the Bible is the law of the land. It said that this is your God's people, whatever. So then the question is, well, how come you don't keep the Sabbath, which they believe is a Sunday? That's why, especially back then, everything was closed on Sunday, you know? But they, they, since they, with their mouth say, and God we trust, and they even put it on the American dollar, now you hold accountable for all the laws that you break in the society because you swear falsely by the most high name. But yeah, so again, this is all about the nation of Israel. Everywhere you turn to us, what it's all about. So you got the Edomite saying, oh, don't make it about this, don't make it about that, I'm talking about some all, and then they want to throw in the whole mingling and nobody knows nothing. No, we know, we know. We definitely know the prophecies, we know, we can be sure to know that with the Israelites because of the spirit and the prophecies. You're the ones that need things to be ambiguous or uncertain so that you can go about your day and your belief in so-called Jesus Christ. Because now you want to be holy because you can basically see where the end of this thing. We got news for you. The Bible was only for one people. Yes, King Solomon wrote the words of wisdom and defined it in the scriptures. Yes, because he was a Israelite and the, the Lord is a person power. The knowledge is for all. But it's really beneficial to the nation of Israel, even when you deal with the wisdom itself. Go ahead. This is the book of Sarai, chapter 24 and verse 1. Wisdom shall praise herself and shall glory in the midst of her people. And the congregation of the Most High shall she open her mouth and triumph before his power. I came out of the mouth of the Most High and covered the earth as a cloud. I dwell in high places and my throne is in a cloudy pillar. I alone could pass the circuit of heaven and walk in the bottom of the deep and the waves of the sea and all the earth and every people and nation I got a possession. With all these I sought rest and in whose inheritance shall I abide? So the Creator uh, all things gave me a commandment, and he that made me caused my tabernacle to rest, and said, Let thy dwelling be in Jacob, and thy inheritance in Israel. See, so that was that was another inheritance that Israel is, is, is with them. See? Now you could be a wise man, meaning you have knowledge, but wisdom will also be revealed all those secrets to an Israelite, to Israel. So how can you say that the Most High is for everybody? The Most High's mercy is really upon all, but the bottom line is he has a people that he called himself. He's our God, right? He gave y'all y'all lands. Look, he told Abraham, I'm a blessed Israel. Don't worry, because it's still your son. But my, my calling is going to be in Isaac. So even when uh, uh, Abraham sent all his children away, he gave them gifts and whatnot. They were blessed, right? Ishmael got a blessing. All you other nations got a blessing. And then we got ours. And then the Lord made us a covenant. And he's basically said the kingdom of heaven forever. So we're about to enter into that covenant. And now you all want a piece of it. And we're here to tell you that's a no can do. Uh, I talked about the whole thing. That's what chapter four. It's a, it's a hell to the now. I guess I'm going keep going. Uh, Numbers chapter 22, verse 1. This is for uh, Moab. And the children of Israel set forth and pitched in the plains of Moab on this side, Jordan, by Jericho. And Balak's son of Zippor saw all that Israel had done to the Amorites. And Moab was sore afraid of the people because they were many. And Moab was distressed because of the children of Israel. And Moab said unto the elders of Midian, now shall this company, this company lick up all that are around about us, as the mock licking up the grass of the field. And Malak the son of Zippor was king of the Moabites at that time. And he sent messengers before unto Balaam, son of Beor of uh, Bethor, which is by the river of the land of the children of his people, to call him, saying, Behold, there is a people come out of Egypt, 
Behold, they cover the face of the earth, and they abide over against me. Now, come now, therefore, I pray thee, curse me this people, for they are too mighty for me. We adventure I shall prevail that we may smite them, and that I may drive them out of the land. For I want not that he whom thou blessed is blessed, and he whom thou cursed is cursed. And the elders of Moab and the elders of Midian departed with the wars of divination in their hand, and they came to Balaam and spake unto him the words of Allah. Right? So they hired Balaam to curse uh, the children of Israel. All right, which the Lord turned that curse to a blessing. All right? But they just go to show you the type of mindset, like the brother was saying, that these heathens have towards our people. They hate us. Bread and water should have came to our aid and support, but at the very least, not a 
to take apart in our downfall or, or us coming out. Your best thing was to just I mean, look the other way. And if we came across your path, you know, bow and you try to help y'all out or whatever, that's how you earn the blessing. Didn't we do the same with Rahab when she uh, uh, protected the spies? We promised her her life, her household, and she got to live amongst the other life. Right, her family throughout her generation. That's what we did, because we still a merciful people. But you gotta come bowing down, right? And with the Lord make the move, make the calls, you gotta comply. But the heathen instead, they fought against. And I, I think I called for Ezra. Second is the fool, first Ezra. No, I mean Ezra. The book oh, Ezra. other nations, your best you should have not have hindered or helped or partook in our downfall. So I got news for you. You all know who we are. You know it. You should be like, uh, what's that brother's name? Uh, Jaina? Is that that brother's name? Jaina? The guy that looks like an Edomite when he goes in, he says that God is black for the children. You know the mouth of a lot of kids. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I know what you're talking. I know what you're talking. Uh, I think his name is Jaina or something. But what is he saying? Jaina. 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 But what is he saying? He's saying everything right. That's why we believe, like, yeah, it is a life, man. He got a heart for this thing. Right? Just think he's another nation. Right? But what is he saying since he thinks he's another nation? He's saying, look, our time is up. We got to respect them. They're the guys. To help tell us who we are. Our people don't want to listen to us, but if you told them, knowing how stupid our people are, they'll listen to you. They'll get mad at us if we tell them to be special. But if you told them, yeah, y'all have got to people, now they got no choice to listen. And they might still fuck up again. And they might still fuck up again. chapter 4 and verse 1 it reads now when the adversaries of Judah and Benjamin heard that the children of the captivity builded the temple unto the Lord Yahweh the power of Israel then they came to Zerubbabel and to the chief of the fathers and said unto them let us build with you for we seek your power as ye do and we do sacrifice unto him since the days of uh, as of Hanan, king of Assur, which brought us up hither. Now, they're lying, right? We just said, well, when the adversaries turned, that our people were going to come back because of the commandment of Cyrus. Getting our act together, we're about to go back and build the temple, right? And the adversaries took it upon themselves to say, we got to go over there, right? So when they come up, they came up something with some also. Let us build, you know, we also serve the guy, which they were being deceived. But here's the correct answer, right? Go ahead. Uh, but Zerubbabel and Joshua and the rest of the chief of the fathers of Israel said unto them, Ye have nothing to do with us to build a house unto our power, but we ourselves together will build unto the Lord power of Israel as King Cyrus the king of Persia hath commanded us. Right, so he said, look, you got nothing to do with this. Has, this has nothing to do with you. This is what we do. Now, there was that episode, I mean episode, there was that scene in the movie Malcolm X. Yeah, the Edomite walked up. I love what you're doing. I want to help. What can I do as a so-called white woman to help the cause? He said nothing. They just walked on in the building, closed the door, right? And when you find that video on YouTube, you go to the comment section, you got all these weak, soft niggas. That ain't right. He shouldn't have did that, which according to them, that actually happened. But according to them, after he went to Islam and he said he saw the whitest the white people exist, the whitest the black people that, then he said like he regretted it, he wished he didn't tell that woman that. Like, no, you told her right, okay? You didn't disrespect nothing, you just told her flat out. Nothing, nothing you can do. The Edomites come up all the time, well, what can I do? All you can do is hope that you're an Israelite. If you're not an Israelite, then you better go about your day not 
and hindering his own <laughs> Okay. Add him to the last one. Yeah, because the Lord sees everything. All right? So that's all we can tell you. And we're at the end of this thing, and at the bottom line is, in the kingdom of heaven, going to be our servants. And like the funny thing about it, ain't nobody put a gun to you, heat his head, and be like, yeah, treat us like that. Y'all do that on y'all own, man. You know? Like, Israel, won't, Israel don't even be bothering you other nations. But some way, somehow, you go out of your way to try to uh, put stumbling blocks in front of the children of Israel. You know? That's why the scriptures call you, you Edomites to accuse of our brethren. Because you're always trying to find a way to track us up or to get us to uh, break the law, statutes, and commandments of the Heavenly Father. That's why you got to be taken out of the way. Because you are uh, a cancer to the earth. Right? You make it sin accessible. Verse 4. Then the people of the land weakened the hands of the people of Judah and troubled them and built it, and hired counselors against them to frustrate their purpose all the days of Cyrus, king of Persia, Cyrus Lockie, even until the, the reign of Darius, king of Persia. Right, so you see, you see their action? You said what? Then they, we hindered our building and hired people against them. These are the things that go out of their way to prevent us from coming back to who we are. So we're not surprised when we're met with opposition here. You got people like Bo Camp alone. He's viewed solely off hate. Okay? He's got his blinders on. I don't care about nothing else in the world. I don't care. I want to stop you all. So I'm studying you. I'm watching you. I'm finding your live chat. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to figure out where you at live and finding you. I'm going to find you and I'm going to try to hinder as much as I can because I don't care about nothing else. That's why we say the man is Haman in the reincarnation. Right. And if you think that you should know, Haman, all right, read your fate. The same snare you're trying to send for us, Lord willing to backfire on you. That's right. That's what all it's about, is trying to hinder our growth. And guess what? You just, the Christians that came and tried, they get shot down. Well, at least they're a great millstone. When they go to them other camps, they actually have tally records. That's a, that's a damn thing, okay? Yeah, we got a, Christians won this one, we won this one. You got a loss against the Christians, man? You shouldn't have any losses. Man, that's embarrassing, man. Because uh, that, that means you're not a true defender of the gospel. Because uh, the Holy Spirit don't take hills. The Holy Spirit is undefeated. You know, like, you let, you let the Christian come up and uh, cut you in the law that you claim that you keep perfect. But you don't, man. Nobody keeps the law perfect. That's right? because they believe in justification by law. Christians, at the very least, a lot of them don't understand justification by faith. That's why they're going to cut you off. That's right. And But what we're trying to tell them is they believe that, oh, it's because I'm, the Lord died for my sins, I can just do whatever the hell we want. We say, hell no. You got to yeah. keep the law to the best of your ability, having faith in your shot, being justified by faith, right. blood covering your sins as you stumble. That's what makes you perfect. Right, which they can cut them on that, like, they're not eating pork or nothing. Okay, but still though, that's why you have to get the 100% the truth. Okay, that's like a battle of 50 50. Okay, uh, partial truth versus partial truth. That's why we at Great Mill said we have 100% truth. Bishop Nate, it's locked I say, Bishop Nate. You got a problem on your hands, because that video I sent y'all yesterday, man, them brothers look like they was going to take the fringes off, man. That Christian out there put throwing scriptures out. Right? They look like they was going to take the fringes off. And it shouldn't be like that. You should, your doctrine should be, uh, you know, be able to build your build your congregation up to the point where stuff like that don't happen. But that's because he ain't teaching them right. They just going off the precept package. And uh, that's it. And, and the law, the law, they don't, they don't understand Yahweh Shai, grace, mercy, and faith. So whenever they're met with those words, faith, mercy, grace, they just resort to the precept package, which is the law, the law, the law. That's why what's going to be revealed is just anti-Messiah. They don't, they don't believe in justification by faith. They want justification by law, which means you are going to stumble the moment Yahweh Shai is mentioned. All, every time you're going to stumble. And that's why you Sakari guys look dumb. That's why you IUIC guys look dumb. 
because you won't justification by law. You're trying to take the house shot out of the picture. That's why to us, these pressures, to you, these are stone to stone. All right. So, okay, that's it on that. That's 100% true. And before some simpleton called, oh, you guys said you were going to call the cops. First of all, it just means stay the fuck away from me. That's all it means. Low cab and I went to the Apostles. He done went to Chicago. He done went to every camp that's the same every time. So when he said call the cops, the message is stay the hell away from us. That's the message. Same thing to you as I, but to stay the hell away from us. Ain't nobody call the cops on you. We're just telling you, you're not welcome. Go to the sellers and buy a yeah, go to the sellers and buy. All right. Okay, we didn't already went back and forth with all of them saying the same thing. All right, the same thing. You're not gonna change our stance. That's how we know what happened. You and all people. You didn't already went to our apostles and the elders in Chicago. That's the heads right there. No more than you deserve to say. But he's just trying to. Oh, I know I can find one camp that I can catch them up and flip them up. No, we all said the same thing. We already know what you're doing. You know, that's all we say. Stay the hell away from I might call them. Uh, second edge is two. I don't pick up in the first three. It reads, I brush you up with gladness, but with sorrow and heaviness have I lost you. But ye have sinned before the Lord your power, and done that which is evil before him. What shall I now do unto you? I am a widow and forsaken. Go your way, O my children, and ask mercy of the Lord. Ask of me, O Father. I will flock you. I call upon thee for a witness over the mother of these children, which will not keep my covenant, that thou bring them to confusion and their mother to a spoil, that there may be no offspring of them. Let them be scattered abroad among the heathen. Let their names be put out of the earth, for they have despised my covenant. Woe be unto thee, O sir, thou that hidest the unrighteous in thee, O oh, thou wicked people, remember what I did unto Sodom and Gomorrah, whose hand lieth in clods of pitch and heapeth of ashes. Even so also will I do unto them that hear me not, said the Almighty Lord. Thus said the Lord of Edris, tell my people that I will give them the kingdom of Jerusalem, which I will have given unto Israel. Their glory also will I take unto me and will give these the everlasting tabernacle the tabernacles which i have prepared for them they shall have the tree of life for uh, an ointment of sweet savor they shall neither labor nor be weary go and ye shall receive pray for a few days unto you that they may be shortened the kingdom is already prepared for you watch take heaven and earth to witness but I have broken the evil in pieces and created the good, for I live, said the Lord. Mother, embrace thy children and bring them up with gladness. Make their feet as fast as a pillar, for I have chosen, he said the Lord. And those that be dead will I raise up again from their places and bring them out of the graves, for I have known my name in Israel. Fear not, thou mother of the children, for I have chosen, thee, said the Lord. With thy help will I send my servants Esau and Jeremy, or Jeremiah, after whose counsel I have sanctified and prepared for thee twelve trees laden with diverse fruits. Okay, that goes into Revelation 20, uh, 21. Uh, I think that point Revelation 21 and 10. Had that uh, bonehead who called himself. This is how you debunk the book of Revelation 21. I'm going to talk about the twelve fruits. Right, which is so, oh my God, it's so simple. Okay, so simple. And what he, that guy was trying to say was, you read the book of Hebrews 11, first four, four verses talk about Abel and Enoch and even Noah. They weren't Israelites. They were saved. There's proof, there's proof that you don't have to be Israelites to be saved. You are so stupid. Yes, they were righteous. Yeah, they were the sons of the whole body. Separated the nations. 
Because I try to act stupid. But you see, this is how desperate really these Christians are to try to sever the connection with the Lord, the Israelites. We understand from the devil's point of view, Esau, Edom, okay, because they operate on carnality. Uh, I tell you, you know me, Jeremiah 33, I believe it's 24. I made a covenant. And yeah, and, and that's the whole agenda. It's to, it's to turn you into a, a lost people. Okay, they don't want you to know how we watch me out sure. But y'all to me, you know, that's a prophecy anyway. We was gonna lose our heritage, but that's what they wanted from the beginning, because they know that we, when we in our right mind, according to what uh, I think it's what Judah the fifth chapter, when they they uh, captured that Ammonite, he was saying uh, basically like, if these people are connected with their power, they're pretty much invisible. So they all knew that. So they they made an agenda. To, uh, hey, Psalm 83, let us cut them off from being a nation, right? So that was the agenda all alone. Is to keep you from worshiping Yahweh Bar Shem the truth and sincerity. Okay? So ultimately, you know, like they jealous. It's like you got a cheat code to uh, a game or something. And they saying, like, yeah, like that ain't fair. Yeah, it ain't fair, but hey, we still gonna win. Fair, the most high is fair because y'all had y'all chest, y'all had y'all wrong, y'all had wrong. Right. And, and you know, I believe that when we get in the kingdom, the Lord's gonna do that to him. Like, look, y'all had y'all time. So you can't say you didn't. Right? right but right, now, right. That's true. it's my people. I said, yeah, that's true, Slug. Yeah, I'm saying that it's not fair. Oh, no, no. I see what you said. No, but you're right, though. They're thinking that it's not fair, but. That's the Lord, you know? But when, when it comes to the kingdom, y'all done had y'all share, right? The Lord still, look, ain't you able to have children? Ain't you able to laugh and enjoy the pleasures of this? The, the, the Lord gave that to you. Right. And it's just, when we get in the kingdom, now it's our time. Right, yeah, can't you pull us over and give us a ticket or something like that? Or laugh and say you got an afro and I got straight hair and all that bullshit now. Ain't you traveling the world seeing all these beautiful exotic places and we over here at our nine to five. Right. Ain't you able to do all these things and live the best life? Got yeah, money that? in the bank. Yeah, you're doing all this experience in the whole world. Hey. The most I've done was went to Puerto Rico. <laughs> you don't think I wanted to see these places that I see y'all seeing? I'm, I'm in captivity, man. You know what I'm saying? Don't you people get to live this life, right? It's good. Now it's time for us to inherit the kingdom. Now all of a sudden, all right, now we gotta go and stop it. You know, but we're not surprised. We got the scriptures for that. Hey, Bo Cap alone, I'm pretty sure he wouldn't even have the life, okay, if it wasn't for the Israelite. It's his whole purpose. Uh, somebody asked him, what was you doing before the Israelite? You know, I mean, like, once I saw them, oh, hell no, now I gotta do something. Right. See, like, like, when does Bo Cap alone even go into a breakdown of uh, the book of Revelation? can't do it. Right. He already explained that when it comes to prophecy in the New Testament, he's agnostic, meaning indifferent. He doesn't, and he believes, according to another scholar, which they believe that John just saw something. It wasn't prophetic. He just had a dream. That's what they believe. So in his belief, nothing is for sure. Nobody knows nothing. Right. You don't know because you are not of the Lord's sermons. Right. The, uh, 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 and Amalekites don't believe in the New Testament. Oh, Amalekites really don't believe in the Messiah at all. Right? I asked you something. That you uh, know, Jeremiah, uh, is it the covenant? Yeah, I believe it's 24. Yeah, uh, what? yeah, we can't go. Do you want to just do 24? I'm going to do it. I'll start at 14. That'll work. This is Jeremiah 33 and 14. And it reads, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord Yahweh, that I will perform the good thing which I have promised unto the house of Israel and to the house of Judah. In those days and at that time will I cause the branch of righteousness to grow up unto David, and he shall execute judgment and righteousness in the land. In those days shall Judah be saved, and Jerusalem shall dwell safely. 
And this is the name wherewith she shall be called, the Lord, Yahweh, our righteousness. For thus saith the Lord, David shall never want a man to sit upon the throne of the house of Israel. Neither shall the priests and the Levites want a man before me to offer burnt offerings and to kindle meat offerings and to do sacrifice continually. Right, this is gonna be all righteous. <clears throat> right. You know, especially back then, when King Solomon explained, when there was that fear of not knowing who's gonna come after you and what manner of way they're gonna go. Because you're gonna be long gone. Look, the scriptures tell you that, to be honest, we can tell you the children of Ain. okay? Uh, just because you have children don't necessarily mean they're gonna be righteous. Right. That's a, that's, that's, that is vanity, man, but it's just how it is. Just because your father is righteous don't mean you're going to be right. You know what I mean? And that's, and that's in the law, too. It says that uh, you won't pay for the sins of your actions. If your father's wicked, but you're righteous, you clear. You ain't going to pay just because you're your father. Right? But look at, look at Samuel. Okay? Samuel had two sons. They were wicked. You, you would think, how's that possible, dude? Your father is Samuel. He's well known, well respected. They even told Sam, they said, look, your children, your sons are wicked, so you gotta go find us some people. Go on the So, that's another thing you should know. You got nothing to do. What's that? You got nothing to do. Verse 19. And the word of the Lord, Yahweh, came unto Jeremiah, saying, What saith the Lord, if ye can break my covenant of the day and my covenant of the night, and that there should not be be day and night in their season, then may also my covenant be broken with David, my servant. And guess what? Let y'all in on my secret. Esau reads that, and he's been trying to do that. Mm -hmm. So basically what the Lord is saying is, if, the, if, if you can find a way to stop my ordinance from the sun coming up, the moon, right. all this happening every day, I will leave my covenant, I will break my covenant with David. Esau Edom is trying to do that. When they talk about blacking out the sun, which is really uh, the devil gates of hell. When they talking about that, they really trying to break that covenant. See, you guys don't think Esau thinks that deep. Well, yes, the hell they do. They are trying to sever the connection between us and the Most High. And they're trying to do it by physical means as well. Right? Keep going. Right. Uh, that he should not have a son of, a son to reign upon his throne and with the Levites and priests, my ministers. As the host of heaven cannot be numbered, neither the sand of the sea measured, so will I multiply the seed of David, my servant, and the Levites that minister unto me. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah, saying, Considerest thou not what this people have spoken, saying the two families which the Lord had chosen, he had even cast them off? Thus they have despised my people, that they should be no more a nation before me, right. or it's like it before them. Right, so the other nations are there behind closed doors laughing and sickness and saying, the two families that the Lord raised up, he cut them off. So now if the most high man, then we ain't got to show no respect to them people. Yeah, we got the answers, finally, all right? Yes, this is how they think of you. And for me, that's all I need to know, especially when I was reading to say, oh yeah, I'm definitely going to get in this book now. Y'all got me messed up. You know what I'm saying? I'm about to read, I'm about to study these scriptures, I'm about to serve. Just knowing me doing the right thing, anger shot for some reason, oh, I'm about, I'm about to do it. You know, that was my mindset of, you know, man, it's true. Because that's the attitude of these heathens. See, our people so concerned about saving them, they want your ass in slavery. They want you to stay on the bottom. They don't want you to make it. They want you to keep voting and trusting in the political party because they know they got the system rigged. You'll be voting and praying forever. Right? They don't really want you to be free. Right? Then your friend all the way up until now is time to talk about reparations, you can say. Now all of a sudden it's not, nah, we gotta stop this. So they really for your for your well-being? They're not. They're not donation. Keep going. Verse 25. Thus saith the Lord Yahweh, if my covenant be not with day and night, and if I have not appointed the ordinances of, of heaven and earth, then will I cast away the seed of Jacob. David my servant, so that I will not take any of his seed to be rulers over the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, for I will cause their captivity to return and have mercy on them. Uh, Isaiah 14 and verse 1, and the 
says for Yahweh will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land and the stranger shall be joined with them and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob and the people shall take them, bring them to their place and the house of Israel shall possess them in the land Yahweh for, for servants and handmaids and they shall take them captives who captives they were and they shall rule over their oppressors. Yeah, so, you know, the Lord is, is, is at the end of the day is going to choose his people regardless, man. No matter what you devils try to do, you try to cut Israel off, you're trying to extinguish us. But guess what? The more you oppress us, the more we multiply, man. Okay? That's why, you know, it's best to leave us alone, man. You know? Because just like the brother just read in Jeremiah, the, the covenant that the Lord made with you, devils, if you can seek out the heavens, you know, he had cut off the, he had break his covenant with us. And if you be able to go into the sea, he had break his covenant with us. And you see what happens every time you try to do that. You can't do it. You get no prevail. You try to send a, a rocket out into space, it burns up, it blows up before it gets there. Look at the situation that happened with the, the damn devils going under the water trying to see the Titanic. Why? Right? That shit ain't cold, man. You know? So you devils can try and try as you can, and the Lord is never going to break his covenant, man. Right, that's how you get that Zachariah? I believe that's the one. It's not that, it's not believe that's it. Uh, this is Zechariah chapter 11 and verse 5. It says, Whose possessors slay them and hold themselves not guilty, and they that sell them say, Blessed be the Lord, for I am rich, and their shepherds pity them not. I believe, okay, it's chapter 1. Yeah, that's 1 and 15. I believe that's true. Yeah, this is the book of Zechariah chapter 1 and verse 15. It says, and I am very sore displeased with the heathen that are at ease, for I was but a little displeased, and they helped forward the affliction. Yeah, so, you helped forward the affliction, you see? You were supposed to, when the time came when we were supposed to be let go, especially you Edomites, that's what the book of Obadiah is about, you were supposed to let us go. Whatever happened to that 40 acres and a mule, whatever happened to you trying to mend your way, you still never did to this day, still to this day. The most they'll give our people to make them feel good yeah. is go to the ghetto and name a street that Martin Luther King. And then right next to it, Obama. And guess what? Those are the worst parts of the neighborhood that nobody ever want to go. Those are tourist sites to see how fucked up shit is. Alright? That's in the that's in the bear, that's the most they'll give you. That's a slap in the face. What about, you know, why, why you you should have tried to make things right? Like I said, the most high sees everything, but since you did I ain't gotta get you right. Just like this with Cyrus, the best thing you could have done was don't enter us, don't interfere with us. The speak to try to help us. Right? So that's the best thing you could have done. Because you exist to sort of the insight of what life is Guys, this is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 50, starting at the sixth verse. It says, My people have been lost sheep. Their shepherd has caused them to go astray. They have turned them away on the mountain they have gone gone from mountain to hill they have forgot their resting place okay verse 7 it says all that found them have devoured them and their adversaries saying we offend not because we have sinned against the lord yahweh the habitation of justice even the lord yahweh the hope of the hope of their father, right? Right, so this is saying, you know, Israel's been lost. You know, we transgressed against Yahweh by Hashem Yahushai, and we was discontinued from our heritage, right? And, and we, we had, we were a holy nation. We had our laws, we had our, land, our statutes and commandments, okay? Yahweh by Hashem Yahushai was with us. But when we transgressed against Yahweh by Hashem Yahushai, okay? We went to a lower, a lower state, okay? Like the scripture said, we went from a mountain to a hill. And Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai caused our enemies to come against us, right? And it says, all that found them have devoured them. And that's what the brother's talking about, okay? How the other nations, okay, they tore us down, they put us in captivity, okay? 
okay? And the adversary, we offend not because they have sinned against the Lord, okay? They think they doing the, the how about Shimmy I shall favor punishing us, but little do they know they're in the trick bag, okay? They're in the trick bag because if they read the scriptures, you're not supposed to touch the apple of his eye, okay? That's all I got. Uh, I can't get a total of my talent. 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 I can't get a total of my